Good evening. Welcome to Tate Modern. My name is Gabriela Salgado. I'm curator of public programs, and I'm very honored to welcome Ai Weiwei to the Star Auditorium today to celebrate the 11th Commission, the 11th Unilever Thurman Hall Commission um, at Tate Modern. Since we opened in 2000, the Unilever Commissions have had a lasting impact and have provided unforgettable experiences for over 24 million people. This year's commission by Ai Weiwei is entitled Sunflower Seeds, and I really hope that many of you in the audience have already had a chance to see it and engage with it in the Turban Hall. Ai Weiwei's Sunflower Seeds combined an epic sense of scale with an intimate level of craftsmanship. It is a truly sensory and immersive installation which visitors can touch, walk on, and listen to as the seats shift beneath their feet. It is made of over 100 million sunflower seed husks, handcrafted by hundreds of skilled artisans in China. The seeds are apparently identical, but actually unique. Although they look realistic, each of them has been individually made out of porcelain. To complement the commission, a very important part of it is that Tate Media has produced a documentary film about Ai Weiwei, which is being screened in the space and can be viewed on Tate's website as well. Also reflecting Ai Weiwei's own engagement with the internet, blogging, and Twitter, Tate has developed an interactive project called One to One with the Artist. It's also in the Turban Hall under the bridge. Visitors to the Turban Hall space can send a video question or comment to the artist. Each week until May 2011, I will select new videos to respond to and will post his answers on Tate's website. A commission of this magnitude would have never been possible without the support and confidence of Unilever, who we thanked for their continued sponsorship of the series. With Unilever's generosity, we have been able to commission new work by some of the world's greatest living artists. Unilever has also now been sponsoring one of the pillars of our learning aims for the last three years, the Turban Generation Project, which is an international online education project which aims to partner schools across 30 countries by 2012. Now about Ai Weiwei, born in 1957 in Beijing, Ai Weiwei is one of China's greatest artists. Ai's multiple roles as conceptual artist, curator, publisher, self-taught architect, public intellectual, and internet champion reflect on today's society, using himself as an example to encourage individual responsibility. Due to his acute interest in materiality, his work often uses a traditional formal language and classical methods of craft and production in China, to encourage reflection on the geopolitics of cultural and economic exchange today, as well as to question the cultural value of objects. Tonight, he will be in conversation with Dr. Katie Hill, senior lecturer in contemporary Chinese art at, at CSD, Center for the Study of Democracy, University of Westminster. She is currently developing the Contemporary Chinese Visual Culture Project a new resource base that will comprise a website, a bibliographic database, and an archive of all aspects of visual culture in China, Taiwan, Singapore, Malaysia, and the Chinese diaspora. Dr. Hill completed a PhD in contemporary Chinese art at Sussex University. Her thesis examined the relocation of Chinese artists who moved out of China in the 1980s to work internationally and their collision with the international art world in Britain and elsewhere. She has worked in numerous areas of Chinese art, including as a lecturer of the uh, School of Oriental and African Studies, London, Sotheby's Institute, and the British Museum. Her current research interests include the male body in contemporary Chinese performance art, nationalism and narcissism in contemporary Chinese art, and the cultural and political relations between China and the West. Without further ado, I would like them to uh, start the conversation for your enjoyment. I have just two announcements to make, and one is that we have handed out feedback forms that would be very useful to us. So if you could complete them and hand them over to our colleagues at the um, exit, that would be very helpful. Also, I am aware that you are using your mobile phones for the tweeting, if, if you want to tweet from the audience. 
Um, but we want them to be in silent mode, please, so we don't disturb the conversation when it's taking place. At the end of their conversation, which will last approximately for an hour, we will open to questions and answers from you, from the audience, and also from the world, because we are broadcasting live, and people will be tweeting. You will be seeing the tweets coming on the screen after the conversation ends. So enjoy the event, and thank you very much for coming. Hello, everybody. I'd like to start um, really with the work itself um, and asking uh, Weiwei about really what his thoughts were when faced with such an enormous project and particularly this um, monumental space of the Turbine Hall. So how did you feel when you were actually confronted with this space? Uh, <clears throat> Why I... Accepted uh, to do the project. I came uh, come to um, this turbine hall twice to just look at the space. Um, actually, you use the words confront with the space. That's uh, what I I try to avoid to have this kind of confrontation with the space. Uh, you, I see many projects are. Uh, um, before me uh, had a very uh, uh, interesting uh, temptations and uh, uh, so I, I try to find uh, a different way to 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 do something which in different directions so I decided to do um, a very small um, uh, pieces, but uh, uh, accumulate with uh, time and with uh, uh, menu a lot of uh, mm -hmm. uh, small details, mm -hmm. but to fill up the the, the total mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. How long did it take to produce the piece? Um, I've heard it's a long a long process from beginning to the production of it. Yes, we start uh, to, I start to um, trying to develop a kind of new language uh, in dealing with uh, uh, porcelain. Uh, porcelain is a long tradition uh, in China. Uh, it has been over a thousand years of uh, uh, practice. Uh, mainly is uh, making the, the kind of very um, practical objects for the uh, actually the place uh, at, uh, I'm doing my uh, porcelain is in Jindazhen. Uh, they have a strong tradition in making uh, vases or bowls or dishes for the imperial family and through very different uh, dynasties. So I try to uh, to to use this uh, very traditional scale and uh, develop uh, into a more contemporary language. So for today, uh, people still can um, appreciate uh, in different angles. Yeah, the... the um, and, uh, I'm sorry, the actual time of oh, yeah. developing is about two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And uh, normally we, we have... Uh, differences uh, in in developing even uh, before uh, really assigned to a, a project, so we we would have a more time uh, to to prepare. Mm. So were the workers who were producing the actual seeds working to produce them over that length of time for two two <coughs> whole years? Were the workers in Jingdezhen actually doing that labor for two years? Was that uh, the length yes, of time? That yes, it took we, to we, we started the uh, first seeds maybe two and a half years, but uh, at the very beginning we, we have uh, tested it in mm. different uh, shape because even some floor seeds you have many, many different kinds. Mm. So uh, when we get the commission, so we, we start to have a fully involvement. Mm -hmm. 
which involves uh, 1,600 uh, people uh, working uh, about 60 different uh, shops. It's incredible. Yeah, no, I saw the, f the, the little film about the process of the piece, and what struck me was how the, there were many people in Jingdezhen, and often the work was being done just in, in people's houses or in the workshops, but it seemed to be taking over. You know, there was a whole sort of culture of this making of the sunflower seeds at the local level, which was amazing. It was like the whole place was actually involved in the production of this, this work. Did you get quite involved with the community who, who worked on it? Um, I have my own uh, kiln here, there, mm -hmm. so from time to time I, I go to there uh, to see different projects. Mm -hmm. So I'm very familiar with the process. Mm -hmm. But the uh, um, porcelain work is really have a, uh, it's quite complicated, have a 20 to 30 different kind of steps. <coughs> so, <clears throat> different people are working on different sections, mm. yeah. Yeah, so really as a contemporary work, it's very much engaging with Chinese tradition and the, the production of ceramic work in China is something that goes back, as you say, and I was really interested to, to see this idea that you have through working with porcelain to produce something which is so like the real thing, you know, so, so accurately depicted and it seemed to me that it's you know partly a comment a commentary about the kind of relationship with the production of culture and how you know representation gets very close to what what you want to depict and the reality of it um, in the in the actual experience of the turbine hall is amazing it does feel like these seeds are very very close to the real thing I was very struck by the kind of um, the level of skill of each single piece. Yes, if you watch the film, you can see each uh, seeds are, are hand painted by those uh, very skilled uh, um, people. There, it takes like six to eight. Uh, strokes to make her seeds. Actually, I tried um, to make some. I did three, but uh, <laughs> they would not accept it. They, <laughs> they think it's not, uh, it's, it look, looks bad. I think this is very interesting because you really have to use um, uh, so many ordinary people there. They are not, they don't know what this is really art or what, but they know what sunflower seeds is like. So you don't have to really teach them, they, they know how it's like, so they, they made it. Yeah, so. I mean, it's almost like the reversal, so they're, you know, they're the artists, you're, the, you're producing yeah, this huge yeah. project which paradoxically yeah. shows up these people to all be artists, and yeah, <laughs> um, I, it's I fascinating. I only suggest this, also move this to here, and... Uh, yeah, that's all I did. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I mean, I was also interested in, in watching the film and seeing the number of women involved in, in making mm -hmm. and, and painting the seeds. I was quite interested to, to know how the division of labour in that process, because obviously there are set, you know, different tasks in production of the, of the seeds itself, and... Uh, you know, it seemed to me that the domestic space and the workshops were full of women producing the piece, which is, it was just interesting to see how, how many women were involved, because it's not something you might realise when you're actually, you know, experiencing the, the piece as you walk along it. The work need, uh, requires a patient, also uh, it's very delicate work, so it really... Um, it's very um, breathtaking, you know, it's really careful work. Mm -hmm. Most men cannot really do it. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> yes, it's no, true. It's very mean. interesting. That. Yeah, yeah I, I wanted to um, ask you about, you know, the, the, the seeds themselves and more the cultural meaning. You mentioned when I met you, 
um, you know, the seeds uh, as a very, very common um, social activity of eating sun sunflower seeds in China. And um, the fact that in every meeting, you know, every board meeting, every sort of official meeting, but also just in social situations in everyday life, you will always have this pile of seeds that people are, are chewing on and, and, you know, creating this kind of uh, material um, sort of pile of, 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 of this snack. And I think, um, you know, for me also it resonated as a a feature of traditional art that, you know, the seed is in traditional prints are often depicted as the, you know, the children, the children, the, the generations of the future. So I was interested to, you know, see different aspects of what the seed might mean, the actual sunflower seed, and see if you could talk a bit about that. Yes. Be besides uh, the seeds, is a very common the most common object you can um, can find in the um, all kind of oca uh, loc uh, occasions, mm -hmm. and uh, also in 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 the Cultural Re Revolution, the sunflowers always being uh, pictured as the the mass uh, which facing towards the sun, which is the leader, Chairman Mao. And uh, this vocabulary has always been used as a uh, uh, very symbolic and uh, meanings. And uh, actually, in the revolution, there's not so many uh, vocabularies. But, uh, but for years, uh, we all see this image of sunflowers everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere in mm. in the household objects, uh, in propaganda mm. uh, paintings, or 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 even on in the um, like design on the, of the clothes or or fabric. Mm. So it's very very common for for Chinese. Mm. And do you think that um, the sunflower in the revolutionary culture was used by Mao as a way of taking on traditional aspects of Chinese culture and, you know, appropriating it for the revolution because it's something that people understood? Uh, yes, it, it shows how how... The Communist Party look uh, seeing the, the the mass the people, and uh, and also it it's because so common, mm. and everybody um, understand mm. uh, this language. Mm. So I think it's, that's why being always uh, so uh, popular. Mm. I want to move on to the, the sort of broader meaning of the work and how it might be read as um, a sort of metaphor for, for, again, the masses, but also just humanity and possibly just the enormity of Chinese, the Chinese population uh, as a country which has, you know, 1.4 million people and is um, being seen as a huge force which is going to change the world. Um, so I was interested to know if, um, you know, the seeds in this world work, when you actually walk on the seeds, uh, whether we can draw that kind of analogy about, you know, the, the seeds referring or sim symbolising people and China's population and the whole issue of China's possibly anon anonymous masses that, you know, that we can hardly uh, take on board here in the West because the, just because of the sheer number of people in China. It's very difficult to almost imagine that number of people. So I wondered if, you know, that has, for you, it is relevant in, in the making of the work. In the process of uh, making the work, and, and uh, actually when you look at the work, uh, it's very hard to imagine or even to, to make a, a very rational uh, comparison to, to what it, the number means. Mm. 
this is uh, maybe one twelfth of the Chinese uh, population. <coughs> but mm. when you look at it, it's just uh, you completely lost the 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 the, the kind of relation and uh, contact. And uh, so, I th yeah, I often think about that. Mm. <coughs> I mean, the, um, you have sort of obviously talked a lot about um, the idea of civil society and its associate. I mean, people have drawn that association in your work, but also it's something obviously you're involved in. Um, so again, you know, whether... To me, today when I saw the work and the public had come and really sort of were occupying the space in a really nice, comfortable way, had sort of settled down in little groups or were lying on the work or just sort of treating it almost like a beach and, and a kind of park space, which was... It was really nice to see it because it had shifted from when we first saw it, when I saw it last week, into a genuine feeling that people were going to take this, you know, as a, as a space that they can be in and use and and really interpret how they like, spatially and uh, physically. Um, and it was, it was really interesting to see how that had shifted, even in one day, with people just coming into the space. Um, so in a way, it sort of raised the question of public space again. And it seems to me that it, it's worked really beautifully in, in Tate, in this particular space, because I think in London people are very happy to just use a space and take it up and actually really embrace it. I wondered what it might be if you'd done that in China. I think it'd probably be the same, but I was interested to know, you know, whether you could show this work in China, this particular piece, and what you might, you know, feel the response to it would be. I, I, I really enjoyed to see um, those this piece, mm. and today to see so many people are really um, find their own way, way to relate to it. Actually, this is a very um, uh, important uh, mm. task to mm. because the Tate um, this uh, this series mm. is really a a public a public art, mm. but. It's so much uh, related to the the gallery here, mm -hmm. so professionals and uh, and uh, non professionals mm -hmm. they all will come to here so that's uh, that's something you really have to consider how how people would <coughs> uh, react to it mm -hmm. and uh, in China, I think you can sh and myself i of course, nobody invited me to show, but if I show it in there, I think uh, maybe it's much less uh, discussion, you know, uh, because China, uh, this uh, very seldom uh, discussions uh, about uh, art and uh, or, or even criticism mm. about art pieces. Mm. Do you think that's because it would be um, immediately associated with difficult issues about politics that, you know, immediately come into play when you're in the Chinese context, you're, especially you, <laughs> because of your known activity and also because you do, um, you know, you are involved beyond the art world in, in issues which are are very much about reality and uh, and society in China. Yeah, once you discuss about art, you cannot avoid really to talk about uh, uh, individuals and uh, freedom of speech. Mm. And uh, so all those are not really encouraged mm. uh, in the open discussion. And so with a very um, strong censorship on, on, on the open discussion and also with uh, um, floating of information. Mm. So, uh, so 
the the kind of philosophical or or moral discussion is uh, is is completely um, disappeared in this kind of society. I suppose uh, my response to that would be that um, people have the discussions in China, but they never they never reach the public domain, so that you end up having lots of conversations about the difficulties and. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, yeah, and then it goes round in circles, and you tend to feel that these conversations in China have been going on for twenty years, and that may be because you know, uh, because political reform has been so slow to to actually happen. Um, but it, it's it's obviously quite difficult to to get that conversation, and and in a way, coming to the West and showing work in the West enables you to bridge um, what you do within, you know, art spaces that give a sort of public, a big public forum for your work and your, your life and activities. It's, uh, yeah, it's true in China has been um, very strong economic uh, development in the past uh, decade. <clears throat> but uh, there's very um, limited space for political reform. And uh, and the government is not willing to to change in the, in any um, in that direction in the, in dealing with uh, um, ideology and uh, in dealing with uh, even have this lacking of vision or lacking of uh, courage, I should say, mm-hmm. and uh, that made uh, the whole situation quite depressing. Mm. I mean, I was interested to to look at your think about your work in China, and it seemed to me the you know I've seen some ceramic pieces in China in galleries and uh, the bicycle sculpture in Shanghai. Um, And then I was thinking, actually, a lot of your work has made its mark architecturally, especially in in Beijing, in Cao Changdi, and in in that area. So it's interesting that, um, in a way, you you, you have quite a strong presence in China through your architecture and some of your other works. And particularly some of the ceramic pieces. Um, but, you know, the flexibility of this kind of work and the, ex- the expansiveness of this kind of work um, hasn't really been fulfilled in the Chinese context. So it's an interesting sort of... You're able to... It seems you're able to produce very rich um, areas of work, but that they sort of have places, you know, so the, the architectural practice... And certain types of work are fine in China, but other types of work you can't really show. So do you feel that your architectural practice has been um, a kind of alternative form of expression in China, in the Chinese context? I think... um, I think architecture is much abstract... Mm. It's really applied um, um, design is is kind of to is very practical mm. and it dealings with um, um, aesthetics moral mm. situation but but it's only it, it shows directly it doesn't need much um, explanation because people can just see it as a, as a, some kind of statement there. Mm-hmm. And I was very um, um, passionately involved with architecture. Mm-hmm. And, but after a while, I, I feel very tired because every piece have to, you know, architects mm-hmm. in China you only can manage it uh, at a... Um, only partially of the work, because you have to really have uh, um, 
involve those uh, uh, structure design and uh, construction, <laughs> and also you have to be involved with uh, government government policies, mm -hmm. and uh, it's really exhausting. And uh, so that's why we we decide and um, completely give up the architecture. In oh, really? Two, yeah, 2007, really we, nice. we decide not to do architecture anymore. And uh, we, but we sometimes we still do a little bit uh, when the project is not, uh, it has some kind of special quality or, or outside of China. What much of your work also features architectural elements, like the you know the uh, temple piece using temple wood, um, which was shown in Documenta. <coughs> alongside your fairy tale piece. Um, yeah, I mean, it'd be, I'd like you to talk a bit about your other work, and in particular that piece, Fairy Tale, at Documenta at Castle a couple of years ago, because it was an extraordinary piece and um, must be the most ambitious thing that an artist can do to bring 1,001 people to a place and, and place them there and orchestrate this extraordinary project. So can you talk a bit about that? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, fairy tale, it's a project made for documenta. Mm. And uh, actually when I was uh, uh, decided to, to, to make that, I, my, my mind it was t completely empty. I don't know. Uh, and what to do? I only know I'm not going to presenting a painting or mm. or object there. Mm. And um, one day, actually, I in in Switzerland, I see many travelers from uh, uh, Milan mm -hmm. and passing this road. So I look at them. I said, uh, maybe this is uh, it's a good idea to to have Chinese people to to have to uh, to travel take take same kind of um, activity mm. but for China uh, for Chinese people to travel is very difficult it's not like in the West you can everybody can just get a passport and uh, and a visa mm. and to have uh, 1,000 Chinese and Travel. If you apply for passport, um, you all you 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 facing great difficulty uh, through this kind of public security bureau. Mm. Uh, some of the participants, they are really from a very uh, remote, poor area. Mm. Uh, in a minor minority village this this whole village want to come and uh, then then when they understand they need passport they realize some women doesn't really have a name uh, which is registered mm -hmm. so they have to make up a name to 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 apply for passport mm -hmm. and uh, also some uh, <coughs> farmers they never really uh, come down from the mountain mm -hmm. area so I I really want a very mixed um, um, condition, mm. and uh, it it include, includes uh, like uh, the guards for the jail or mm. or or highway um, uh, policemen and uh, you know all kind of people, mm. and uh, I select them and through computer and communication mm. because they always have us, um, relatives or, or mm. people can help them on that matter. And uh, very, and, and convince the German ambassador to, to give green light, you know, because mm. it's very difficult for people to provide the necessary materials mm. like uh, banking account mm -hmm. or, or working units, uh, so mm -hmm. some kind of uh, <coughs> proof. Mm -hmm. And uh, with very uh, intensive uh, <laughs> kind of wor working um, team, mm -hmm. we 
we achieved it, and uh, it, it was a very、um, unforgettable experience.、Mm-hmm. We we built uh, at, uh, their dormitory in Germany and、uh, brought cooks and、mm-hmm. uh, made uh, um, traveling and, and you know like、uh, the, their luggage are designed and、uh, their beds or、mm-hmm. blankets or even pillows、mm-hmm. are designed and. And、it's hard even for me to repeat this kind of、uh, uh, project. I wouldn't, if I think about it, I I would just would shake my head. You know, it's it's a kind of crazy project. Yeah, it was yeah. an amazing project, really unforgettable. I think.、Um, yeah, I want to move on a bit to、um, your relationship to the West, and in a way, the sort of issue of translation of your work. And how, perhaps,、um, in order to translate to global audiences, it has to retain a simplicity and possibly a kind of generality,、um, and so that you know, in a way,、uh, it seems to be that some of the bigger projects、um, end up being monumental in order to. To communicate very directly something outside China,、um, and obviously with the the piece you did in Munich, which was the was it snake sealing, using rucksacks from the children who had died in the earthquake.、Um, that's a, a clear、um, translatable work. In that it's about a specific event, and also it relates to very strongly to humanity、um, and the tragedy of that event.、Um, so I'm interested in 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 how you really negotiate the specific with the general, and how you、um, whether anything gets lost in translation when trying to communicate、um, your work to. Non-Chinese audiences.、So. I think a lot of time <coughs> is、uh, is just a simple statement uh, and uh, a statement without、uh, very um, uh, knowledge about the background.、Mm. It will get lost anyway,、mm. and、uh, so and a lot of time I just.、Um, Trying to make a gesture about this, and、uh, it's not、uh, um, while you're de- while you're dealing with a, a project、uh, which will show far away,、mm-hmm. and also well,、um, uh, it takes a lot of uh, other uh, consideration.、Mm-hmm. Um, the Munich project it takes,、uh, I think.、Uh, Maybe seventeen, eighteen containers of the material,、mm. and、uh, it was shipped for two months,、mm. and、uh, it takes about twenty, thirty people、mm. to construct it,、mm. and so it, it a lot of、uh, consideration.、Um, a local artist will not really、um, mm. um, keep in mind.、Mm. And、uh, then <clears throat> you have to introduce certain ideas or 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 kind of、uh, your interest or your effort in in the in the real life, which、uh, in China、uh, and kind of political social、uh, conditions, which is not、uh, the same. So you you have to give a lot of explanation. And、uh, but also,、uh, you are trying you are trying to avoid this too much explanation, because、uh, art should have this kind of power and the direct, immediate uh, um, uh, um, emotions and、uh, and the texture and、uh, this kind of. Mm. Awareness, so you don't want to rational to destroy that part.、Mm. 
Yeah, I was thinking about, um, in a way, the sort of difficulty of uh, understanding your Twitter activity as a major new activity that you've been doing, and obviously a very important one. Um, and you know, because that takes place in Chinese, essentially, um, there are limits to, to that activity, and it becomes quite bounded in the Chinese context, or maybe could reach out to uh, anybody who, who is conversant with Chinese language. Um, so, yeah, I was interested to know what you think the extent of the, uh, your communication can be with the problem of your, your activity within the Chinese situation in Chinese, you know, using, using the Chinese language, um, and how that can sort of reach out beyond that, that situation. Uh, as an artist, I often feel the kind of awkwardness to mm. being an artist mm. in China, but not showing in China, but mm. showing in the West uh, to very different audience. Mm. And uh, under the kind of daily activities, uh, I, I, uh, I'm very active uh, in China. It's mostly on, in, on the internet. Mm. I used to have my blogs. I, I write every day, and I, uh, I write two, two or two to three articles per day. Mm. And uh, over about two or three years, I had uh, like two thousand seven hundred articles. Till the government cannot bear with it, they shut it down. So I, uh, since China doesn't have Twitter, you know. Uh, doesn't have Twitter, you, uh, YouTube, or or Facebook, all those uh, being censored in China. So I have to, uh, if I use Chinese, uh, they also have a Chinese uh, uh, mini blog, it's, mm -hmm. it's like Twitter. But uh, every time when I get on it, I will, will be, my ID will be um, blocked. You know, it's not, uh, sometimes I made great effort, you know, I changed like my name 40 times, mm -hmm. but they still can find me and they, whatever they say me, they just shut it off, you know. So one day, actually, uh, you know, everybody got very mad. So yeah, on the Twitter, they they all pretend using my name, like I Wei 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 Wei, I I Wei Wei, you know, <laughs> Wei I Wei, you know, all, all, all similar, but also mm -hmm. use my image. So we had a, like a, a Twitter riot, mm. and uh, so they couldn't find out which one is real me, real Ai Weiwei. Mm. They shut off this, this uh, service. This service has been there for, for <laughs> maybe 100,000 people for years. <laughs> Till today, this, this service uh, being, you know, the, the total site yeah. being mm. shut off. You know, everybody blame me. Said you know, all because you, <laughs> because they all you uh, very familiar with uh, that. It was mm. very nice um, one. Uh, we uh, we call it. Uh, you know, the name is called Fan Four. You know, it's a very very uh, n nice one, but it's compl uh, permanently shut off. And uh, now every day I spend about four hours. Um, uh, four hours uh, maybe has. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's eight hours actually on Twitter. So, and uh, talk to uh, people and mm -hmm. uh, communicate. I always, I always want to find a new way uh, to communicate because I, to me, just hanging paintings in museum is not enough. You know, it's it's uh, so many people in China they never had a chance to go to a museum, mm -hmm. and uh, but. Uh, so for Chinese, I think uh, internet is uh, is a, a great gift. Mm. Do you think that um, this is going to change? If you look at your baby son and what might be in store for him, how do you see? You know this, this issue of. Um, Chinese society and culture and the institution of culture in China 
And with all the art districts in, in Beijing and Shanghai and the, the art worlds that have emerged in China over the last 10 years, um, it seems like there is a momentum. You know, there are people actually going through 798 every weekend, lots of students, lots of people, visitors. And so that you feel somewhere like the National Gallery in Beijing <laughs> is not a public space. But in a way, the art districts, which have been driven by artists, more or less, um, have gained a kind of dynamic, even if they've been problematic and come up against the government. Do you feel that um, that will continue? I mean, there, there must be some kind of momentum um, brought about by cultural interaction in China. I think uh, the, 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 the development uh, on the uh, humanity side on the, it's, uh, it's quite difficult. Mm. If you have a, a government which uh, not a, or you have a, a system which forbidden of uh, freedom of uh, information and uh, exchange and uh, so that would uh, uh, limit the, the, uh, the possibility of uh, to, to create, to be creative. And this is, uh, but if they encourage uh, those, this government is going to be finished by very soon, you know, it's not, it's not going to stay. Mm-hmm. So, seems they seems they cannot find a, a better solution. So they they just uh, trying to maintain uh, this kind of stability. Mm-hmm. China uh, today is spending over four hundred billion mm-hmm. uh, <coughs> to in internal stability, mm-hmm. which is higher than their army and defense uh, uh, cost. Mm. And uh, it's maybe one third of the education mm. and, and cost. Mm. So you, you see an, a nation like China, they have Olympics or World Expo, mm. and they're trying to um, put up the kind of nice image mm. to the world to draw more business. But at the same time, after 60, 60 years of uh, mm. uh, control, still wouldn't allow the people to have uh, liberty to mm. f- freely exchange their ideas. Mm. And I still put people who have different beliefs, mm. different thinking in jail mm. behind the bars. Mm. Or if anybody wants to, to do something to change it, they can make them disappear. Mm. You know, nobody would answer mm. and give any kind of uh, discussion on these matters. Mm. So it's, it's a government really refuse to communicate, refuse to, to build up a more scientific mm. way to solve the problem. Mm. So I believe this is not going to be lasting. You know, it's, uh, with today's... Uh, uh, condition. Mm. So you think there will be change? Yes, I'm sure it's going to be change. Mm. They cannot uh, afford this mm. uh, to to meet the challenge. Mm. Um, what do you feel about um, the uh, recent uh, announcement of Liu Xiaobo being awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, which, of course, everybody is absolutely delighted. Um, but, you know, a lot of the response in China has been quite negative about that. And it's an interesting problem, <coughs> you know, how, how to, to change attitudes of nationalism and to open up ideas which have been excluded. Um, so it seems there's quite different positions from within China and you know, the, 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 the community, global Chinese community and the diasporic community um, still remain quite separate from 
you know, that of China itself, of mainland China. Is there, I mean, do you think that, um, you know, your role as an artist can help bridge that problem? I think uh, being an artist in China, it, it means uh, you have to find a new way to to express yourself and uh, to encourage individuals to 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 be more uh, to have more imaginations and uh, to use new forms and. Uh, to anticipate the social uh, activities. Mm. And um, there's a lot of things you can do. We, we do a lot of uh, uh, documentary films. Mm. We're giving away, like, uh, last few months, we, we, we're giving away uh, 100,000 pieces mm. uh, freely to uh, uh, young people, whoever wants those documentary films. And uh, there's a lot of space there. Mm. Mm. And, and uh, this garment is very arrogant, you know. It's uh, 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 li like Liu Xiaobo's case, uh, nobody, uh, you know, it's, there's no discussion about it. They, they really, uh, I think they really, um, the government was very offended. They just they couldn't understand the why and the how this is possible. And uh, on on Twitter, somebody said, you know, the government uh, in the past forty hours, um, uh, uh, like forty hours earlier, the the, the the Nobel Prize has been given to a Chinese citizen, mm -hmm. but in past forty hours, the government trying to educate why this price given to this citizen because they arrest many people who is celebrating mm. this. So, mm. so, so people, the young generation, they start to realize uh, something is wrong mm. because the education is quite bad and uh, the information is very limited. And uh, so still many people uh, is not aware what is wrong. Mm. Mm. What do you think um, younger artists uh, who are doing interesting new work, there's lots of artists now who seem to be using new media, digital media, forming groups um, and uh, possibly experimenting with new types of community in, in making art. Um, what would you say to them as an artist who wants to communicate? Um, you know, how, how would you see the future, the new generation of artists who are coming up now? Uh, what do you think the most important role for them is in their work? Do you think it's, do you, do you put criticism in, in artistic practice as a very major aspect of what people should be doing in China? Or, you know, how do you feel about different types of practice? Do you feel it's an absolutely important thing to pursue? I think uh, uh, for young artists, of course, you have to understand what has been done. You know, it's uh, art as a... Uh, uh, activity which um, uh, has been there for a long time, but mm -hmm. I think more important is to understand today's uh, um, difference. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have many, uh, much uh, free um, uh, technology mm -hmm. can provide us um, uh, a different uh, uh, um, passes for for expression mm -hmm. and. Uh, <coughs> Not only uh, galleries, museums, but uh, but there, there's many many other possibilities there. So I think uh, to 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 realize uh, and to to use the new technology, it's uh, uh, and it, it's very exciting and it's uh, can always uh, bring a new uh, 
new face or the new aspect into this uh, um, art field. I mean, it seems in China that, in a way, the art world itself is rejecting people who try to reach beyond the art world, but there are a certain number of artists who've been trying to do that for a number of years um, and then find themselves really sort of outside the gallery space, which is a very difficult thing. Um, and yet, in a way, their practice is much more extensive, as is yours. Uh, so, you know, there's the problem of the, uh, the art market actually reducing the possibilities for creativity in China and maybe defining it too heavily. Do you think the art market and the issue of commercialism in art has delimited what could be more expansive forms of art practice in China? I think there's no ideal situation for this. And I think uh, uh, the market or commercialization is always there. Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, only an a, a artist who is uh, uh, strong enough or do have some uh, meaningful uh, message and, uh, and always can come out, it doesn't matter. Um, I think the condition is not so important. Mm. And, uh, I'd like to ask you a bit about your role as a curator and uh, the really radical show you produced in Shanghai called Sh Fuck Off in 2000, um, which really reached the limits of what could be shown in the gallery space with lots of um, fairly horrific uses of the human body and um, pieces of flesh, shall we say, uh, brought out of morgues, um, showing very quite shocking uh, artworks. And in a way, that was an extraordinary show because it was <coughs> extremely radical and produced a lot of interesting questions. Um, do you... I mean, the, the, the sort of work you were doing around that time and before, leading up to the time after you came back to China from New York, um, it seems that there was a lot of very interesting activities going on in the art world bef before it had really become um, visible and had emerged in, in, a, in the form that it is now. Um, do you still believe that those kind of activities um, and the experimentation with material and form could, could be uh, pursued in China? Or has it just clearly come to an end, that kind of level of experimentation? I, I think there's always artists or, or, or people there trying to to express uh, through their own uh, understanding and uh, all also more, uh, I I say more honest uh, to the condition or living condition or or, or, or the, the the true situation there. And uh, but I, on the surface, of course, you know with uh, com so commercial the, the, the art uh, market there so you <coughs> and today you uh, you don't see so much it's not uh, so um, popular mm. what uh, I um, did at that time is trying to create a new um, possibility through um, publishing books mm -hmm. and uh, all underground uh, uh, organize underground shows and uh, and uh, to encourage this kind of uh, individual effort. Mm. And uh, today, with so many commercial galleries and uh, space, and uh, the condition t completely changed. Mm. And has that led you into using documentary film as a medium? Um, we should talk possibly about your film. Uh, La Ma Ti Hua. I'm not sure how, how we yes. um, translate that. But um, the documentary which was 
which you made around the time of visiting Sichuan to attend the trial, to support the trial of Tan Suoren, who had become uh, under threat due to his position where the buildings in the earthquake were concerned. Um, that project seemed to me really, really interesting and very powerful, partly because it was so it was produced in such a natural way with very little editing. Um, and its simplicity, again, is, is very powerful. Um, and also that project, alongside your project, which was um, aiming to uh, extract the exact number and names of children who had died in the earthquake uh, when the government had tried to cover up that information. Um, those pieces are, are sort of almost outside the realm of art, but on the other hand, they're extremely powerful pieces, which in some way have more of an impact than artworks. Um, how much have they been seen in the West? Have they been received? Um, I, sh I showed... Uh, some of the, again, a simple gesture in the Munich show, mm. but there's a lot of materials and a lot of effort we made uh, uh, in doing that <clears throat> by organize a, a, a kind of civil activity mm. to, uh, with uh, hundreds of volunteers to go to Sichuan to locate those uh, uh, student uh, who 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 died in the earthquake, over five thousand of them, mm. and uh, <coughs> it's it's completely covered by the uh, the uh, co uh, cover up by the government, mm. and uh, we are facing about forty arrests uh, by police. They they just taking away our our. Uh, investigation and uh, erase the names and uh, mm. delete or uh, delete our photos or mm. and the voice uh, recording, but still we uh, after uh, one year we still achieved uh, achieved this uh, goal to find all all those students mm. who died in the earthquake mm. because the the wrongdoings of the building and. Uh, and that also um, caused my uh, uh, injured. Uh, and later, I had an operation in the Munich. Mm. And I think by doing that, um, you you not really encourage uh, people and to to ask questions. To uh, also you you show how how to act. You know? mm. Every day we posting the diaries by those mm. uh, volunteers on the blog, and every day we post those names. Mm -hmm. And so people, you know, just ordinary people who is not politically involved or who who is not interested in art, but they will always uh, ask the same question: Why this has to be done by this artist, mm -hmm. and why this government uh, is hiding it? For what reason? I mean, those are simplest question people would ask. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw that you on the Twitter again. Back to the Twitter activity, you've posted the birthday dates of the children with the birth date as it comes up on the day and their age, um, which seemed to me almost very, very, very powerful. Um, as a, almost as a sort of conceptual piece which has incredibly strong political relevance. Um, and so in some ways, to look at the, that kind of activity, it almost intersects with artwork in its, um, in its ability to kind of cross, cross different types of media and to bring out issues which are very... Um, well, tragic, but also uh, in by marking them through time, through real time. Um, and it seemed to me that, in a way, you know, none of this can really be uh, disentangled from what you do as an artist. 
I don't know if you agree with the, you know, that, that it's all integrated into what you do, um, rather than one activity being sort of art and another being not art. Um, so I'm interested to see how, you know, how you perceive that and whether other people might see these things as very separate domains to work within, because you're working in very, very different areas while you're doing all these different things. I, I actually, uh, I don't categorize this is art or that is not art, but this is normally the, um, the society would say, oh, this is, mm. so I think the all related and all supporting each other is, is not uh, separatable. Mm. And uh, it's, um, yeah, mm. this total effort, I mm. think, it's uh, what I, I'm doing. And uh, But in the different shows, you only can show maybe one aspect. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's very interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, just really... Uh, Beyond your, your, your Twitter activity, your internet blogging, and your political campaigning, if you like, um, I mean, the, going back to the, the Chinese reception of your work um, and, you know, implicit uh, kind of differences in attitude, um, do you find that in China the audience is much more critical than in the West towards your own activity and, and work? Um, since there's no real uh, platform, no real discussion, so sometimes you see a lot of people in supporting you and mm -hmm. sometimes you see completely everybody criticize about mm -hmm. you. and uh, So you couldn't really uh, find out because mm -hmm. this is through different channels are really... Uh, very different uh, opinions. Mm. So it's, I also wonder, you know, what uh, would be if we really have open discussion about those issues. Okay. Um, well, I think we've nearly come to the end of the discussion. So um, as far as I can see, we should open it up to the audience and get some questions. <laughs> Sorry? The microphone. Okay. Oh. Okay, those who want to ask questions, we'll open it up to the audience. Um, we need to wait for the microphone to go to the questioner before asking the question. Okay. <laughs> well, um, the lady at the front. You wait for the microphone. Um, you talked about uh, the Great Firewall of China and in the discussions you both together discussed the winner of the Nobel Peace Prize. My question is, have you in any form, Twitter or otherwise, been able to discuss with him your shared bid for freedom in China? To di discuss with whom? With Liu Xiaobo. Liu Xiaobo? Yeah. Um, I know Liu Xiaobo since 1980, uh, 80, middle 1980s. And uh, he has been in and out jail for so many times. And uh, I, I still have a photo. And we, we had this uh, demonstration in New York to, to asking the government to, to, to release him. And, uh, in, in Beijing, we don't have many uh, contacts, not, 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 not very often. I made a, a, a show, I had an art space. I made a show for his uh, wife. Um, the first photography exception for his wife um, after he uh, came out of jail uh, many years ago. And... Uh, once he, I invite him for dinner, I realize he's come to dinner, uh, but it's the police driving him, you know, uh, in the police car. It's kind of very strange, you know, you, you're eating dinner with this guy, but the police uh, is uh, 
It's like lemon waiting outside. <laughs> then after the dinner, so he get on the police car, then drove home. And uh, also, I'm uh, I signed this uh, petition he, he made. You know the the, the uh, chapter right. eight. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then the next thing I know is he's uh, you know sentenced for uh, for so long. So I think the the award given to him and. Uh, which encourages a lot of young people in in China to to at least to pay a lot of attention to what's what is going on. And uh, but uh, it would not really uh, make significant uh, change in the uh, the politic uh, situation. <laughs> Well, as much as I'm in support of uh, Liu Xiaobo's release, I'm still quite baffled by, by his views, like by his support for the Iraq war and uh, how he thinks China should go through 300 years of colonial rule by the Western society to achieve democracy. So I think this Nobel Prize has as much credibility as that they gave nomination to George W. Bush. So he was someone who was approved approving the war, the Iraq war. What's, um, what's like, um, so I don't think that's anything to do with peace. But um, uh, my real question was, uh, um, what prompted you to be so uh, radically political in recent years? Was it like uh, a coincidence or was it uh, accumulated over the years? Because uh, uh, when you, in the early stage of a career, you were as not, uh, you were not, uh, you were as not political as you are now. But it was because uh, what the police, what the uh, national security did to you, that prompted you to be more militant and radical. I wouldn't think of myself as a radical, and uh, <coughs> you know, if somebody have different opinion, and especially for me as an artist, uh, and choosing different forms of expression in China, you're radical. But uh, if I'm in the West, I think it's very normal, you know. This person, what what Liu Xiaobo express or what I express, is a very um, common um, condition or common values, which accepted by anybody in here. But in China, by doing that, the government have very br brutally put him in jail for 11 years, and uh, also. Uh, there's no open discussion about uh, what he did uh, and, and uh, you know, why they sentenced him. Everything is done in, in a, a kind of s secret fashion. I, th I think this is not a, a way for modern society to, to behave like this, especially it's not for a government, which in one hand is so strong and is so arrogant, but on the other hand, is secretly uh, trial people, and uh, and uh, there's no space, uh, even there's no space for discussion. You know, so this happens in China every day because Liu Xiaobo is is well known, but in every trial in China, it's all influenced by the party. There's no independent judicial system in China. And uh, this is uh, like a dark age. It's like, a, or it's like a mafia society in, in the way. <clears throat> I would like to bring in the questions. Is this working? I would like to bring in questions from tweeters around the world. There's one. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't finish uh, the. Sorry, uh, so I just uh, because he asked me why I recently become so sorry, you very adi uh, I mean active or radical. I have very strong reason to become, uh, you know, to show my opinions towards this society because uh, my family, my father's generation, so many people sac uh, sacrifice their life um, without even can make any uh, expression. 
millions of them. And uh, today we have the possibility, I have the possibility to make, uh, to express myself. And also we have this new technology internet. So if there's no internet, I, I will not sitting here today. I, I'm, I'm sure, you know, what uh, I, I have been making like over maybe 1,000 interviews. You know, each day I will make about two interviews in past uh, three to five years. So that's how, you know, I think technology is very important for today's uh, 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 condition and uh, I'm always been like this and uh, if you know me better I'm the first generation acted in the democratic wall you know which is 1979 and uh, immediately after that activity one of the person his name uh, you know the Wei Jingsheng was sentenced for 13 years that's also is part of the reason why I went to United States because I was too young and I realized <coughs> I can immediately disappear if I keep uh, staying in China. You know, it's, it's a very dangerous society. <coughs> but till today, it's not much change. On the surface, it's very peaceful, very, you know, prosper, but still uh, they, they can do, uh, you know, they, they can act very violently towards uh, different opinions. Sorry. Apologies for interrupting. Um, there are two questions that are related. Uh, one is on screen and it's about the discarding of the seeds. Um, I don't see it anymore. Can we just scroll down, please? There is one about uh, if you thought about the possibility of stealing playing a role in the sunflower seeds installation. And that relates to the other question, which is about what's happening after with the seeds, what's happening, how you are recycling them, if you are taking them back to China, what is the plan for the seeds? What first um, if you have contemplated the possibility of stealing by the public. So the, the, I think uh, the first question answered the second question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Am I right? I'm, I don't know. Hi, <laughs> wait, wait. Thank you very much for your very uh, elucidating comments and indeed for the extraordinary back projection that was often quite distracting. Um, I just wanted to ask a simple question. How, how come you've survived? How come you are, in a way, the only voice that we consistently hear uh, really um, illuminating uh, the, as it were, the evils of the present Chinese uh, political system? Why aren't you in jail? <laughs> it's a, it's a really a question many many people ask me so many times. Um, well, I'm still here, but uh, I don't know tomorrow, you know. And uh, seems I'm always a step closer to that uh, point. But uh, I I don't want to stop myself. Or, you know, I you know if. Maybe I, I will be stopped by some other kind of force, but I, you know, life is like that. I think you have to take take chances. I think uh, it's it's worse to do that, and uh, I don't really know. I cannot really give you clear. Uh, you know, or normally I would say, oh, you should ask the, the 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 public security bureau what what is going on there, and. Uh, <clears throat> But uh, I think my activity, uh, because I'm an artist also, many people said, oh, because your father is a very well-known poet. But he was in jail and he was uh, exiled for, for, for almost 20 years. 
So maybe I should give some credit to uh, this government not to put me in jail. You know, I don't know. Hi, Ai Weiwei. I'm very glad to have the chance to talk to you uh, in a free area. Um, I'm a Chinese uh, born in China and grown, grown up in China. And, um, well, uh, I know you through the internet and uh, through the uh, Twitter. And uh, you are like an icon in China now uh, for, uh, uh, well, proclaiming the, the uh, freedom and uh, the democracy. But uh, like 90 percent of uh, my classmates and my friends, they don't know you. They don't know who is who are Liu, who is Liu Xiaobo and who is people like this. So it sometimes it makes me very sad. Like uh, we are trying to uh, make the society better, but uh, most people now they don't know who you are and they don't know what we're doing. So I just um, want some opinion, uh, advice. What should we do? Uh, <clears throat> first, I think we, we are doing this not because our generosity is because the way who we are, you know, it's really, we only, that's the only way we can enjoy our life. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a bargain, you know, it's really, uh, it's terrible. It's sometimes the condition becomes so bad, but still we have no other choice. And, uh, but uh, I think with the internet gradually and, and uh, you know, more and more people uh, like your age or even younger uh, becoming involved. Um, but uh, I still think uh, as artists, um, if there's not so many people uh, who, who paid enough attention, it's my fault because I, I can do it better. You know, I always uh, think there's un some other possibility or the other form I, I didn't I didn't use it well, you know, it's not, uh, so yeah, I often think about that. And, and I think, I believe that when there's difficulty or, or problems, then that's the area need a creativity and need a, a kind of expression, which can lead to, to a better uh, condition. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I, I think I didn't, I, I think I didn't make, make my opinion Clear. I, I want to say is uh, people who uh, uh, climb over the wall to see uh, what we are doing is those people who are they uh, they want to know these things, and the majority of people they don't uh, they don't want to know these things. They they don't have to climb over the walls. They just enjoying the happy life in China. So how? Can we change the opinion of those majority? Um, yeah. uh, this may be uh, very hard to answer, but this is really, a, I think, a, a big problem for China to go to the, uh, well, democracy. I well, yeah, as long it. as uh, um, there's no uh, freedom of expression, the maintain the stability is very easy. You know the the government knows it so well. You know you 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 have army, then you have the, the all the media. So you know that's how this is very simple. And uh, <clears throat> but I think uh, this, the in the reality in the in the larger uh, picture, I think the government still cannot really control the the the, the many factors like. Uh, like economic factor or 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 more people want uh, freedom because they become better off in the in the in their life condition become better and the many many other issues such as the population uh, issues and, uh, and uh, so if they can really maintain that that means it's it's a very good uh, society you don't have to change it and uh, so this is 
it's really about a culture, about a, it's a cultural question. It's not a really, uh, uh, nobody can really, uh, um, can really can make a, some kind of change without uh, the majority of people have the same kind of dem uh, demanding. <coughs> Good evening. Thank you very much. Hi, Wei Wei. Uh, just a question. I, you, you, I'm very interested in the um, firewall <laughs> as well. And um, you did mention the internet as a very powerful force for good, potentially. And um, also the, the, the contradiction <coughs> of trying to make China a respected, nice place, but keep absolute control. I'm just curious because I, I, I lived and taught in China for three years and I keep a lot of email correspondence with Chinese friends and ex-students and while I was there I didn't curb my own free expression at all uh, and I sent them photographs of atrocities committed in Tibet and I mean things as controversial as that and what puzzles me is uh, as far as I'm aware none of these emails has been <coughs> censored mine or my Chinese friends and so I'm just curious as to how they you know where does the borderline come why do they you know they exercise great censorship and yet it's like free free email conversations I think the <clears throat> the so-called uh, great firewall are uh, really um, act more like to blocking the the majority of the the uh, discussion on the current issues, and uh, of course the personal emails may may not be affected. But if you talk about, for example, if you talk about Liu Xiaobo's uh, uh, condition is the same day, mm -hmm. you cannot even type the name uh, in Chinese uh, internet. Uh, we call it a local uh, internet. You cannot type my name on the internet. It would come out a line that illegal words being used. <laughs> or also, also in the many many uh, 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 service, you you cannot even type Hu Jintao's words or or Communist Party's words, because if you criticize that, that automatically those names will come out. So you just you just cannot see it. So. In China, you have a words called uh, sensitive words being used. So, uh, like my name or democracy or freedom, they're all being called sensitive words. Uh, well, emails from me to China can get through. Yeah, know. yeah, it's, uh, that's, uh, it's not, uh, uh, it, they, they are working on it, but it's not uh, so successful, you know, and uh, they, in their dream, everything can be censored. But the technology, I, 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 that's why I still have hope. I think they, the technology finally will, uh, will win. You know, they cannot beat the new technology. The development is really um, by millions of people uh, are really based on the, the, the desire of more freedom and then uh, uh, much uh, um, rich possibilities, and uh, every day there's new millions of new inventions. How can they beat this? It's not possible. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask if you have one overarching focus or intent behind all your work or whether that changes from project to project. Do you have something that drives you behind all of your pieces? Or is it distinct according to the project? What is the last um, He said, does, um, Do I have a plan? Is there a sort of driving force behind all your work? 
or is it each project is different? I, I think it, it, it seems quite different. And, you know, in, I remember in the 80s, I showed a, a New, New York gallerist of my profile. He said, I, I like your work, and, uh, but you have no cons uh, consistency. You know, in the 80s, no consistency is a very, you know, it's like you're dead or something. <laughs> but uh, we are living in a world which has no consistency, I, I should say, you know, it's really. Um, so I'm lucky I still can can be uh, this condition. And I, I, I think every artist, it doesn't matter how, how you change, still there's a... Uh, um, uh, something which drives you, or, or uh, well, have um, a kind of quality or, or kind of intention there. My, if ask me my intention, I think I am more interested in a new possibility, uh, and uh, 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 if I can find a, a, a some kind of new structure or uh, to open up some possibility and uh, to, to, to not to be uh, the kind of myself. I think myself is, is, uh, is uh, just an illusion there. And uh, if I, I can make some difference or can make some change, I, I'm always satisfied. What were your, the most important influences for you when you were in the, in the U.S.? I was very uh, influenced by the American art, I should say. And uh, being in New York, I know very little about uh, Europe. And uh, I'm very much uh, interested in the activities in the 70s or 60s. And uh, of course, Duchamp is uh, uh, also had a very strong impact on me. Thank you, Iroway, for the um, um, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Thank you very much, Iroway and Katie, for the conversation. Um, I have a question about the films um, Iroway has been ma uh, making. Um, well, in the past a year or so, you have been using documentary or documentation of your the production process of your work or your political um, investigation had become more and more important, and I. Um, uh, such as the film La Matihua, or the English name, Disturbing the Peace, and, um, and the one um, on Yang Jia's, um, uh, Yang Jia's uh, issues. I want to know, are you going to use this film, the camera, and documentary more often um, in your future work? And how do you see people responding to your documentaries in China as so you are circulating a large amount of DVDs freely to the Chinese people who request them. Thank you. I think in the 1980s I heard uh, uh, Spielberg said in the future everybody can make a movie, you know, because it's so, uh, the, the DVD. So I was really, I don't understand what he's talking about, but even I, I was a film student, but Today, we, because we are so involved with the, the political social issues, I, I think filming and, uh, and uh, use uh, photos or images or phone are, are so common, everybody use it. So uh, it doesn't require any skill. I, I think uh, when the you know, Chinese have lawyers, they always have a problem with uh, evidence. So they, they, they said, uh, well, we, can, we, uh, can you teach us how to and how to make a video so we can have some evidence. 
So I yes, I said yes. So they, they these forty of the lawyers come. They are all civil rights lawyers. So I teach them uh, um, the technique. So I said always turn uh, just turn on the the camera <laughs> and uh, never shut off. You know, let it be on and. Uh, so that's all I teach them, you know, just make sure you have enough battery and the tapes. <laughs> I think anything can be edited as a, a great film. I mean, it's, it's no question about it. It's just to be, need to be on. I think most people in their life, their conscience and their, it's not on, you know, they, they're waiting for some kind of uh, gesture to make them to turn on. It's always too late. So let it be on all the time. And uh, you will be part of the history, and uh, the, and the history will be part of you, maybe. <coughs> and so now China is it become very popular. You know, uh, everybody start to record. I think for for this kind of society, the most important tool is to open it up to to let people know what's going on. You know, to show them uh, under the sunshine and. Uh, so I think even those, you know, those people are very powerful, but still they are shy from that. You know, they don't want their daughter and their wife know what they are doing, and uh, they don't want to be appeared on the large screen. You know, it's it's so, and we don't have other possibility. You know. Aside from the political and social aspects of your work, you obviously use the traditional, rich cultural stream of traditional Chinese art. And uh, should, are you proud of being an international Chinese artist and building on that? I think there's a trick in your question. <laughs> Aside from my political social activity, I have no other work. And uh, I think all the traditions also part of the social political work in at the, that time, and uh, so, yeah. Um, I do have a question, but first I'd just like to thank you for creating a piece of work that people can actually touch and feel, because I find it particularly interesting going to an art gallery when you can't touch things. And I find it nice to be able to touch a piece of work because you can get a sense of it more. And my question isn't quite as intellectual as some of the others that have been said this evening. Um, but I'm just intrigued as to what your opinion is of your installation and whether, you, whether you're pleased with it. I, I didn't get your question, um, sorry. Are you pleased? Oh, I, I, am I pleased about this? <laughs> Um, actually, for me, it's in the past already. I'm more interested in communication with uh, on the on this. Uh, we set up this uh, internet uh, communications, so that can get me more involved. And the work has been done a long time ago, so it's not so important to me. One more question then, um, at the back. Hello, um, I just had a question about, well I work um, in prints and drawings, so I was wondering how important drawing is in your practice um, as a finished um, product in itself. Um, because often we see lots of your work, which is very slick, um, finished, and um, often handcrafted, perhaps not by your own hand, but maybe you're, the, you're sort of um, commissioning other people to do it. So I wondered if it was something that was sort of a private thing, or would you consider showing your own drawings? How important is it to what you do? Is it just the process, or...? Yeah. <laughs> About drawing, <clears throat> I used to draw a lot, and uh, I, sp I would spend uh, like months on the uh, 
railroad station or or a zoo. You know, I'll, I have tons of drawings. But when I went to the United States, my mom threw the everything away. <laughs> Today she's really a one feel sorry about it. You know? <clears throat> but uh, then you know, I I just. I think I'm very happy. I, I don't see those drawings around. And uh, in, today, you know, you have camera, and you have, you know, it, it can record so many uh, information, and it's so uh, even very unpredictable what you're really uh, putting. Uh, you know, you're taking a, a photo, then later you look at it, you know, you notice so many things you would never uh, even notice. <laughs> So I think uh, it's a very different uh, uh, time now. I think uh, drawing is not import, uh, relevant anymore. Uh, of course, it's still it's beautiful. It still can uh, you can still enjoy it. Yes, but it, yeah, that's my feeling. You know. I think that's it. Okay. <laughs> okay one more. Um, you've spoken a lot about what you think uh, the Chinese public need to do to improve the Chinese way of life and the Chinese government. Do you think there's anything that we, the Western public, need to do to improve the Western way of life? <laughs> Maybe That's you quite answer. a big question. <laughs> yeah, I think um, they all had uh, different problems and. Uh, uh, n nobody's really secure, I should say. You know, even uh, you know, we have uh, we we all sense uh, uh, we all have sense of uh, crisis of urgency. You know, it doesn't matter what kind of society we are in. You know, so. <laughs> Thanks, Thank you very much. Thank you.